It goes without saying that art must be seen to be appreciated. But there's seeing, and then there's seeing. Seeing the paintings of Vincent van Gogh in the immersive multimedia experience called Van Gogh Alive is a new way of seeing. It's seeing on steroids. There are multiple versions touring the world, including this one at the Salvador Dali Museum in St. Petersburg, Florida from November 2020 to June 2021. It's a rock concert. It moves, it pulsates. It shows every stroke in a way that you can follow the movement of his hand as he conducted his starry, starry nights and his meadows of sunflowers. You get a new sense of who he was, what moved him, and where he was going. Vincent van Gogh was born on March 30, 1853, in the Netherlands. He was the oldest of six children born to a father who was a minister in the Dutch Reformed Church and a mother who came from a wealthy family. There were clergy in his family tree, but there were also art dealers. Initially, Vincent followed the art dealer side, and it took him to London when he was just 20. Looking at the photos, there is little hint of the man we'd see a few years later in his raw self-portraits. It turned out that Vincent didn't like the art business and was yet to discover his real passion for painting. He next turned to the church, serving as a Methodist missionary in Belgium, but religion was not his path either. In 1880, he moved in with his younger brother, Theo, an art dealer. Theo suggested he take up art, and for the first time in his life, he knew what he was called to be. His life as an artist began at the age of 27. Tragically, it would end just 10 years later, when he is believed to have shot himself in the chest. Suicide, an accident, some suggest he may even have been the victim of an assault. He lived like a blazing comet passing overhead, and then he was gone. His 10 years as an artist produced an amazing body of work, especially in his later years in the south of France, when his creativity exploded, where he found his artistic voice. This period was the theme of the 1934 biographical novel, Lust for Life by Irving Stone. It was made into a movie in 1956, starring Kirk Douglas as Van Gogh and Anthony Quinn as Paul Gauguin. Their tempestuous relationship led Van Gogh to cut off his left ear in a drunken, psychotic episode that led to his confinement in a mental institution. By most standards, his life was a failure. He sold almost nothing and received almost no critical acclaim. He was a man way ahead of his time, and by the time his fame came, he was gone. It seems obvious that he suffered from some serious form of mental illness. There are many theories, including that he was bipolar. His mania drove him to exhaustion. He was malnourished, often spending the money Theo sent him for art supplies, models, and alcohol. Doctors diagnosed him as suffering from acute mania with generalized delusions, yet he never stopped until he could go no further. Some of his last paintings were of golden wheat fields ready for harvest and black crows swooping in to feed on the plants. On July 30th, 1890, he shot himself. He lived for 30 hours, long enough for Theo to arrive, but his body was so depleted by the way he had lived, he lacked the strength to recover. His last words, the sadness will last forever. Theo was overcome by grief. This may have contributed to his death just six months later. The brothers are buried together in the town cemetery of alvaz sava about 15 miles northwest of Paris. Ironically, at the time of his death, Van Gogh was on the verge of being discovered by the art community. Theo's widow, Johanna, played a major role in his transfiguration. She cataloged his vast body of work. She arranged exhibitions. She published hundreds of letters Vincent had written to Theo. Vincent did not court fame or fortune. There's no way of knowing how he would feel about his eventual acclaim. He lived a tortured life. For him, the sadness never ended, but it helped create a lasting legacy that generations had come to admire and enjoy. 
The Van Gogh Alive experience powerfully amplifies this. In 1971, Don McLean wrote a song, Vincent, Starry, Starry Night. The closing lines go, Now I understand what you had to say to me and how you suffered for your sanity and how you tried to set them free. They would not listen. They did not know how. Perhaps they'll listen now. With the help of Van Gogh Alive, this is happening for hundreds of thousands of people around the world. They'll be looking and listening, and perhaps now they'll understand. For time to travel, this is Phil Dean at the Dolly Museum in St. Petersburg, Florida.